There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Erin Maney, if I don't already know you, and I am the project manager for Open SUNY Communities of Practice. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, I would like to welcome you to this fellow chat. The Open SUNY Fellow Chat Series is a program offered monthly with the aim of featuring Open SUNY Fellows and their work to support our mission of networking, interaction, and excellence in online teaching and learning. We're excited to share this fellow chat with you today. We're pleased to welcome Courtney Batista Bish and Molly Mott from SUNY Canton, sharing how SUNY Canton launched an effort to create community and connectedness in a virtual environment by developing relevant campus experiences for online learners that strive to educate the whole student and decrease isolation. This project is a SUNY IITG sponsored initiative. Innovation Instruction Technology Grants provide seed funding to encourage the SUNY community to address advisory priorities identified by the SUNY Provost. To learn more about IITG or view other sponsored projects, you could visit the link that I will post in the chat momentarily. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers today. Courtney Batista Bish has extensive experience in student affairs and has been integral in addressing the needs of Canton's fully online students and engaging them in campus life. Molly Mott has over 20 years experience as a distance learning educator and administrator. She's been responsible for developing campus online learning policies and procedures and has presented at local, state, national, and international conferences. Molly and Courtney, on behalf of the Open SUNY community, I thank you for joining us again today and sharing your experiences with us. Um, hello, everybody. I'm just, does everybody hear me well? Yep, it looks like it. Okay, and so I'm just going to touch on the present button um, so that we can move through the slides. And Erin, that doesn't seem to be pressing for me. Can you advance the slides? Erin, sure, Molly, you... I can do that, or I can stop sharing, and you can share from your computer. Um, you have a problem? Can... Yeah, I can just click on share screen and then take that over, correct? Absolutely, go ahead. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm really excited. Courtney and I are both thrilled to be talking about this. Um, this was a grant that we put in for um, the IITG. And the reason why that we did it is because um, SUNY Canton has um, quite a few online student enrollments. Actually, 25% of our total enrollments come from our fully online students. So we're talking about 700 to 800 students that we don't see on campus. And couple that with our um, online bachelor degrees and the various um, disciplines, we really felt that we needed to think more carefully and deeply about meeting the needs of our fully online students and what that means. With that said, the majority of our enrollments that are fully online are still the non-traditional students that are looking for that convenience and flexibility. Um, but what we've started to see, especially in the last couple years, are two specific things. Number one, more of our traditional students are starting to enroll in our fully online degrees, and they're doing so because of the cost of college, especially room and board. So we have about 22% of our students that are enrolled in our online degrees living within 50 miles of the campus. And since we're also starting to see more expectations from the non-trads as well, they're asking questions about the college fee, why am I paying the athletic fee? Why am I paying the um, career placement fee, fee, et cetera? So they are actually um, lobbying and advocating for a fuller campus experience than what they're currently getting, which is you know, your usual links to services and resources and um, web pages. So if you take these two trends and you couple them with the research that shows 
both the traditional and the non-traditional online students are likely to drop out more than their classroom counterparts. And they do so because of isolation. So we looked at this big picture and said, okay, if we know we have these changing needs of our non-trads and we're seeing more trads and we're losing both of these um, student cohorts, what can we do to increase the retention? So we started by asking um, several questions to guide what we were going to write in our grant. And the first question that we want to ask is, how do you engage students with the campus who are limited by geography and time constraints? Because even though a non-trad may ask to be um, engaged in campus life, it might not be with the exact same experiences as the on-campus students. And a perfect example of that is when we were thinking of a homecoming weekend. Well, do students that are fully online at a distance really want to watch a video of everybody else having fun on campus? So maybe, not, maybe that's not the answer, but are there other things that we could do to offer them a homecoming experience that they would connect to the campus? And the second question we asked then is, is it possible that the online college experience can really be developed to marry the campus-based experience? Um, it may be true in some examples and not true in others. So if our students that are at a distance are starting to seek these experiences, what are they specifically seeking? And I think the trap for us was we, we were approaching it from what we thought they would want to um, see happen on campus. And we really had to flip our thinking and kind of get over ourselves and dig into what they want to see and experience. So um, we thought of some engagement strategies and we based them on the different um, dimensions of campus life. And I reached into three faculty that were seasoned online instructors who I knew would be very um, active in promoting campus life to their fully online students and we had them be a part of the pilot. So the first thing we did was we had these pilot faculty send out a brief survey that touched on these different dimensions. So we had social, co-curricular, and academic. And so I'm going to let Courtney kind of talk about the social and the co-curricular engagement strategies. Sure. So for the social strategy, um, we were fortunate with the help of the IITG grant to secure a uh, piece of software through Campus Labs uh, Corporation that we've dubbed on our campus, RuLight. Um, and that, that's a virtual meeting space for clubs and organizations. We've been utilizing it to engage students both here on the campus and students at a distance and online only. And we've seen that that's been pretty successful. Out of our 60 clubs and organizations, we have about 40 that are online and enrolled in that now and hosting events and uh, networking with their peers, which has been a really positive experience. Um, we have the student, um, the student life team, kind of a couple with this, have been creative in thinking of ways where we can engage the online students in um, social events. And, and like Molly referred to earlier, it's been difficult because we want to make sure that we're not doing it from our frame of reference, but doing it from theirs. And so collaborating with our um, online um, committee that has online students on it has been a really valuable experience. Um, under co-curricular, uh, the study abroad fair is something that we've been working closely with Molly's area, and I'll probably let her speak a little bit about that. But the, the leadership series, um, which is co-hosted between our academic affairs and our uh, college foundation, has brought in some speakers who are alumni or um, um, folks who have a message to send to our students. And we've been able to broadcast those through an online streaming service that we mm -hmm. use between uh, Blackboard and Panopto and have uh, captured a repository so students can view those later at their own um, leisure, which has been a really valuable experience for our students thus mm -hmm. far. And we'll continue to do that through the course of the year. Yeah, I think that's great, Courtney. Um, I was just thinking off the top of my head a recent thing that happened related to the um, social aspect of uh, our fully online students. We've been um, doing a drive and support for um, Puerto Rico because we have a pretty um, you know, significant cohort of students from Puerto Rico and the campus really wanted to support them and their families. And so we did a drive on campus and one of the online students reached out and said, 
I'd like to be a part of that. And so we were able to work with a local um, vendor so that the online students could actually go and um, give donations and buy supplies, etc. And that was organic because we hadn't thought of that. We're trying to train ourselves to say, whenever we do something for our campus-based students, how would they look for our fully online students? And we missed that. But the online students are the ones that pointed it out. And so I, I was really excited to see that happen organically. Um, with the study abroad fair, part of that is the awareness that our study abroad initiatives are available to our fully online students. And we had one of our fully online students go to Italy. And then we had that student do a video talking about their experience. And so it's about educating our fully online students that that's available to them as well. Um, one more thing, I'm sorry, one more thing to add back under social as well. We were, we paired with our Student Government Association and we actually added an online student position to our executive board this year, which um, has allowed for them to have an online ongoing chat during student government meetings so that online students can participate. And, you know, we sort of debated early on, was this going to be a valuable uh, piece for our online students? And although the presence has been small because we're starting to get the word out, mm -hmm. we've already seen that it's been really? a place to get some so. critical feedback. Um, and I know Molly's going to talk in a minute about a survey that we did that sort of references uh, mm -hmm. involvement in student government too. So again, I think thinking outside of the box and thinking outside of traditional student life um, has been a really important mm -hmm. development for us. Yeah, um, and so in terms of the academics, uh, we wanted to make sure that our pilot faculty um, would support these efforts so we could gather that momentum and get um, good feedback from them. So these are experienced faculty who are well-versed in best practices for student engagement and online learning. Um, the other thing that we did that was new this year was a virtual career fair. We actually used the career placement fee to pay for the vendor to put that on. That was fabulous. I, you know, we were a little worried at the beginning we wouldn't get participants. We had 300 students participate and um, had excellent feedback from that virtual career fair. And it kind of ties into the research that we did that shows that a lot of the students, if um, they're in the fully online courses, they want um, initiatives and activities related to advancing their career. So they like to see alumni involved, they like to see career services involved, and they like to see a more virtual advising. So. Um, that's where we focus our attention on with um, those initiatives. So what we did after that initial um, survey is we followed it up with a kind of a midpoint formative interest survey to see if what that small population said they were interested in with those different dimensions, a larger population would be interested as well. And we got over 300 responses. And we put them all together, and some of the things that the students wanted to see we're already doing, so that tells us we need to do a better job of um, informing them about that. And with that said, they came up with some really creative ideas. And I think the gist that you look at it is basically they feel like they're on the outside looking in the window. And they need to feel that the campus is thinking of them, even if that particular activity isn't something that they wanted. Um, so that type of presence and awareness is important to connecting, connecting them to the campus. And when we did the formative um, assessment, the activities that they rated tops were presentations and um, presentations and speakers live and recorded. So I'm glad that we had pulled that into the pilot and had already started working on that. The next thing they wanted to see was the career fairs that were virtual. So once again, we're happy we hit that target. Um, they noted they wanted to see career-focused lectures presented by alumni in their classrooms. And that really brought up an interesting thing because our alumni association has really struggled with how are we going to capture these students when they graduate as alumni when we never see them? And perhaps they really don't feel bonded to the campus. And, you know, maybe if we had a smaller population, that would be such a big concern. But when you have 24 to 25% of your total enrollment online students, that's a hefty chunk that are going to leave and graduate and not become alumni. 
So they were really looking for ways to, um, to make that connection. And so hearing the students say, we'd like to hear alumni in our online courses is really um, a nice launching launching pad and so I'm actually meeting with the VP of advancement next week and we're going to work on how do we cultivate that relationship and how, how can we make that happen in more classes. Um, and we're certainly talking continuously with the pilot faculty. They give us feedback on what the students say they're interested in, etc. Um, additionally, we felt we really needed to anchor all of this tied in a bow to a place where they can go on our website and traditionally it's always been well everything's available via a link via this page via that page but a fully online student doesn't want to hunt and peck for all of this information so working with PR we created this virtual campus website that consolidates everything so if you're a student and you're either prospective or fully online current student you go to this one website and all of this is pulled in together. The rule life where they can be a part of the clubs and organization is there. The resources are there that particularly talk about how they serve online students. Um, so we, we really went from the, the stuff's there to intentionally making fully online students feel that they had that sense of place that they didn't have to run around look for. Um, and so it was also important for us to create mechanisms for feedback. We have a student online advisory committee, which is a subgroup of our subgroup of our faculty online advisory committee. And the student group is made up of students that specifically talk about. I don't know how to mute mine, so I'll just go to my office. Oh, I don't know who I'm hearing. Thank you. I'm hearing somebody. Oh. Not anymore. <laughs> um, and as Courtney said, the Student Government Association has been um, a big part of that. Um, so looking at the preliminary results, what we're seeing is people want value. Education costs a lot. Um, they want to know that the fees that they're paying for, they're seeing value. So if they're paying a student activity fee, they want to see they're going to get something real and meaningful from that. Um, number two, the engagement space where they can actually create a club, an organization, and engage with the campus that way has been uh, more successful than I thought it would be. Agreed. And, and just to jump in on that, the other piece of feedback we received early on and continue to hear from our online students is how important it was to separate out um, Rue life from traditional social media. So we have a lot of students, particularly our non-traditional students, who don't um, want to be engaged on Facebook, on Twitter, on um, social media platforms, but they still want that social interaction with their peers and with the campus. And they felt um, the feedback that we've received has been really positive about having this external engagement space that doesn't require them to get into traditional social media. Um, so we thought that was really positive. And, Kind of a piece of this we created an online student only listserv so we can actually directly communicate right with those online only students instead of to our whole entire student canvas listserv so we have the opportunity to get that mm -hmm. you know uh, moment by moment feedback which has been really positive at least as it relates to the mm -hmm. life. yeah i think um one of the things that we continually um struggle with and brainstorm on our communication pathways um, how best to reach these online students. Like Courtney said, we have the, um, the distribution list just for the fully on. We have the virtual campus web page. We push things out to the pilot faculty. Um, I don't think we have that all solved. Um, in the survey results, they want to see more Snapchat um, and things like that. So I think that's definitely an area that we need to continually talk to the students about. And I think it's going to be ever changing as we know communication with students is, um, that we have to be on top of it. Because um, if we're really going to make them aware of all of this that's been going on, we need to effectively reach those different audiences. Um, Bottom line, I, like I said before, I think it's the social presence, just like it is when you teach an online course. They need to know that someone is thinking about them, considering their needs, and are showing up. 
And one of the um, responses in the survey talked about what a, did you read that one? It said, uh, what a complete turn the administration has yeah, done. Very quickly. <laughs> very yeah, quickly that, yeah. in thinking about the online <laughs> students. And I'm like, thank you because Yay. my life is consumed by this. Right. But, yeah. And the other thing too related to social presence. I mean, it was a, another really affirming moment for me was when we were setting up the Real Life platform, the, um, the administrators from Canvas Labs, uh, the person we were working with said, I was an online student in another institution out of state. And she said, you know, I would have given anything for the college I went to, to have had some sort of engagement like this. This is really amazing. And this is something I think students are really going to glom onto. And I think mm -hmm. she's right. It was, it was a nice moment because we mm -hmm. think we're doing the right thing, but it's always nice yeah. when an external person says, wow, what a neat idea. And I think we've, I think we've seen results. We've got a ways oh, to go. But, oh, yeah. yeah um, positive. Something just popped in my head, you know, squirrel. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking about, you know, this mix of cohorts that we have, the traditionals that are trying to cut costs and the non-traditionals that are working, et cetera, and need that flexibility. So with the traditionals that live within the 50-mile radius, um, they do want to know about the campus events so they can come for them. So it's kind of complex in meeting the needs because in one sense you want to, you don't want to bog down the non-trads that don't want to know the stuff they can't really drive to, but yet we do have a population that wants to. So I think getting as much information and continuing the dialogue with them and, and asking questions repeatedly um, is going to help us kind of create um, more targeted, strategies or at least have a, a better sense of how we can plan for all those different populations. It's really the same struggle we have on campus with our commuters. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think the biggest change here is um, changing the, the campus's way of thinking, changing the way that we do business here where like Molly said earlier, always thinking about the ways we can engage all of our students mm -hmm. online. You know I think there's this Tend tendency to say, well, if they select it online, they don't really want that campus yeah, life experience. But mm -hmm. reading these 300 results, it's um, it's amazing how many of them said, mm -hmm. I want to see a sporting event. I want to have, you know, career panels. I want this. So, you know, that's a really positive. Yeah, thing. I mean, like, some of this stuff is fascinating. One student said what they miss about college is exercise, so they want to see an app. <laughs> Um, that exclusively connects them to and tracks their steps, like okay. swimming or biking. I thought that was interesting. Um, they want iTunes cards instead of movie tickets. Um, you know, like with the student ID, there's so many things our on-campus students access via the student ID, especially in town. Well, what's that like for a student that lives at a distance? Can they get a discount with their SUNY Canton ID at a local store or something different that would still meet that, like, um, I want the same thing as they have. I mean, sometimes it just boils down to that. Um, yeah, so I really interesting stuff. So in terms of our next steps, we will do a summative um, assessment to all the students and the pilot faculty at the end of the semester. And then we'll incorporate what we learned from that and massage, create, and refine our engagement strategies going forward. And then we're going to look at our retention rates because we certainly want to um, see is connecting to campus life going to reduce that isolation and increase that retention. And, you know, I think it's hard to kind of tell this has just been one semester and then it'll be next semester. Um, as we gather momentum, will that change? Is it going to improve? Um, really, if you look at the research, there is not a ton of research on how to really engage online students outside of discussion boards and things like that. There isn't that robust um, literature on how do you connect them to campus life to keep them feeling bonded to the campus. And um, they love giveaways, so I'll tell you that. You know, we're gonna, I haven't told you this yet, Courtney, but <laughs> we're gonna do stress relief packages for final exam week and um, so we're going to fill it with different things that we would do for a campus student, that we give away stress balls at that stress zone and highlighters and peppermints and things like that. And I'm not sure how we're gonna do it. Like, do we raffle it off? Do we, whatever. They love gas cards. Those are big with distance students. Um, but, you know, saying to ourselves, okay, we're going into finals. 
we do all these things with our um, on-campus students. Well, what about the um, fully online students that really need that same um, experience? So I get excited about those little things. <laughs> Anywho, so um, we'll certainly open it up to questions. We'd love to talk about it. Anything you want to ask us? Molly, this is Erin. I just have to say, um, you know, there are some comments in the chat uh, that, that are great. Jamie had a comment about students wanting to get together. And it's, it's really neat, you know, when students are now starting to advocate and ask for these services, but I love how you've been, been so inclusive and thoughtful about including students from the planning, you know, as advisory um, committee members and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and making a place for them, I think, is, is what's really important. I also put a link to your virtual campus website for folks to check out because all the resources that you shared and talked about are there. So um, that's available. That's fabulous. And we welcome any feedback on our um, campus webpage. There's still some deeper layers that we're not really satisfied with yet and we have to revise. And we did give the um, campus web page to our student online advisory committee and like tear it apart and they didn't and you know I want them to tear it apart and um, so I think that's always going to be evolving and something we will continually put out there and say please critique please say this is confusing or we're missing something because um, we can always improve that anchor because that was just really our first pass I'm interested in what other campuses are doing and why people thought this was an interesting topic. Like, are they looking for their campus to get involved or it's just out of curiosity or do they teach online? And if anyone wants to talk on, um, on, the, on the microphone, you can feel free to unmute yourself. There's a button in the bottom left corner of your screen. Um, you can talk that way. We do have a couple questions. Um, Maureen is asking what the initial motivator was for this project, and how did you actually know your distance learning students felt isolated? I kept getting nasty emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I've been teaching online and I've been involved with it for years, and um, you know, just getting the teaching part down is uh, enough enough to chew on at times, getting people to um, really engage students with the instructor and build relationships and not just with the content has taken years, right? And um, we've just started to see people ask more questions. I would get these emails like, why am I paying the student activity fee? And I've got nothing to say back because they're right. And um, they're a voting member. We did online voting for our student activity fee last year. And we just prayed it got passed because a lot of students took it. And they're like, why are we paying this when we don't have anything? And so it kind of was like the time that it, it all came together where we're ready for that next level and students have a right to ask those questions and college is expensive. And now when we launch activities like with the virtual career fair, we made a point of saying to them, this is the, the placement fee that you paid for is funding this effort. So we try in our communication to um, tie it back to you've invested and this is what you have. And um, yeah, I just kept getting, I get emails that confirmed what I'd already thought and wanted to do. But now I had the emails to um, kind of like prove it and weave it into, my, into the grant. And at the same time, we had the student government uh, president. The student government meets regularly with the president of the college. And uh, our student government president, uh, her name is Nikki, she actually had gone to the president about the same time and said, I'm getting a lot of feedback from online students, and I think we need to do something for online students. He's like, well, so convenient <laughs> that you mentioned that, because you know Molly's working on this um, initiative, and you know she thankfully roped me in and um, you know we've had a great it's time a way, Cord. <laughs> in a huge way we've had a good you know it, it's been good though because it's a nice way to marry uh, student life which sometimes is the outlier mm -hmm. in this whole process and it, it's changed the way we think of student life mm -hmm. um, even adding things like telecounseling for our counseling center and um, you know making sure that all those services that we provide to students on campus are somehow available to yeah. our online students so I think it's been a really positive 
experience. Yeah. I mean, I just like it was starting to really um, bother me that we're always just sending students to links and oh, well, you know, tutoring is available online. Well, you're an online student, you're not on campus. Unless tutoring says they provide it online, you kind of don't think they're thinking of you. So um, we worked with our division so that each of the support areas, tutoring and library, et cetera, specifically created a space that said, online tutoring, online library help, and that can catch their eye. And then when we consolidated it on the virtual page, there's so much more work we need to do on that virtual page that I'm excited about, but um, I don't want to throw too much at everybody this semester because it can be overwhelming, but um, I just, I think this is going to continue to increase and there isn't the research there showing really what to do yet. So. So another um, question from Cheryl, I know that she has talked about uh, in the chat that they sometimes work to connect students using Zoom and through other mm -hmm. assignments and activities. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I was actually an ID on a campus, I had a faculty member who recorded her, the narration to her PowerPoints and her lectures mm -hmm. and put them on iTunes because she had a group of students who would go running together and they wanted to listen to them on her iPhone. You know, just these things that come up, right? Um, but Cheryl's asking how you engage alumni um, uh, for, you know, former students in this. Well, that's what we're working on. So, um, you know, it's been very challenging because I think the alumni um, department is like, well, where do we begin? Well, we're going to begin with the fact that students said they want those alumni in their classes. So the um, the VP for Advancement alumni is actually going to work with the pilot faculty and say what, you know, what would help you if we, if I could get an alumni to speak and they can do it over Blackboard Collaborate, which is, you know, it's kind of like doing Zoom. Um, they could do it over Skype. They could do it with our lecture capture Panopto. Um, we're working now with Converge Classrooms where we offer our face-to-face -face, um, online as well. So we're really pushing that lecture capture, both live and recorded. So I think what's gonna happen is we'll start with a few faculty, get those alumni in, um, talk to the students more about how can we specifically help you um, with, you know, in terms of the Alumni Association, scholarships available. Uh, what about undergraduate research and scholarly activities that you have on campus? Um, so I, I don't think we have the answer to all of that yet. Um, we just know they want to see it. We know some things we can do. So I think working with the, um, the Advancement Alumni Office, they may think of things that we haven't thought of. But once again, I think the students are gonna drive that conversation. So we need to continually ask them and not just assume what they would like. And the other thing too, the, so the Rue Life software, our next phase of that, once we really have um, captured the online students in our current population, is to add an alumni layer to that. And so hopefully the students who began in real life will be able to carry through um, as mm -hmm. alumni and also network with some of their peers and grow that base. So I've also been speaking with our VP for advancement and, you know, hopes that as we get a phase in, you know, the next steps in real life, that'll be um, a direction that we go as well. Yeah. So continuing the social networking after they leave. Yeah, and a couple of things that we, we are thinking of is, um, you know, when our students graduate, our fully online students graduate and alumni go out on travels at the end of the semester, could they stop by where um, some of those students are graduating and actually congratulate them and we give medallions at graduation. So there's the opportunity for alumni to network to students that are graduating and actually um, then carry them into the fold of giving in the future. Um, oh, I had something off the top of my head and I just forgot what we were going to do with alumni. Uh, shoot, I forgot. Darn it. Squirrel. <laughs> It'll come to you. Oh, but I really wanted to mention it. What was it? It was the graduating students. Um, hmm. Yep, gone. Gone with the wind. 
<laughs> well, people. I'll move on to another comment for you. Maybe it will, it might trigger something you said. Um, I thought Roberta had really, um, a really good comment that students, she teaches nursing, but mm -hmm. students request online options, not just because of distance, but for flexibility. Oh, yeah. And they want that peer and faculty connection. So for peers, they thought of a virtual coffee house. And um, that's really kind of neat. And they try to get back um, to students and have Zoom forums mm -hmm. to really enhance that social presence. Yeah, um, yeah. definitely. We're, we're going to do Google Hangouts and do coffee hours in the evening. That was one of the things the students said in their survey. So I'm thrilled to hear that other people find it valuable. So when we take that step, they'll find it valuable here, hopefully. Great. Yeah. That's great. Oh, Marie. I know. I know what I was going to say. Oh, great. Go ahead. Yeah. So I did you know, I was I wasn't thinking once again, you know, of thinking from your own head and not the perspective of students that they really would never want to um, to either have us do regional meetings or that. Well, what a pain. I don't know anybody. I'm not going to go. Well, we had um, definitely survey results that show that they would do that. And um, so alumni, they're thinking of hosting regional receptions and perhaps um, gathering some um, students that way for the future. And they actually did just host uh, this, this year and last year a regional um, alumni gathering in New York City where they invited um, alumni to be panelists for also for future students. So it was sort of a, both an alumni networking event and also a recruitment tool. So that was kind of a neat, mm -hmm. um, a neat segue there. We actually had, this cracks me up, we had a online, fully online cross-country student mm -hmm. that showed up at the meets and ran. Mm -hmm. Is that not cool or what? <laughs> cool. I never would have thought of that, but see, organically they did. That is really neat. Mm -hmm. um, we've had two questions around mm -hmm. services that you provide. One is if you could share the platform vendor for the online website that you created and also what you use for online tutoring. Oh, okay. Our, our vendor for the website is our own PR director who's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Rue Life? Is that what you're talking about? Rue Life? Life? I think they were talking about the virtual campus. But either yeah, well, that's, our, that's our PR director. So that's homegrown. Um, and with the online tutoring, we have it set up that we do online tutoring with our own tutors, and they do it via Skype and Blackboard Collaborate. But we're going to be participating, um, I think it's next semester or next fall, in the uh, STAR system to, to complement it. We, we, we use online. We pardon? Yeah, we, we find the students really want the tutors to come from our campus tutors. They didn't, they didn't want to go smart thinking. They wanted to um, work with our own peer and professional tutors, which, you know, um, I understand that makes sense because our tutors know this, the um, faculty better and what the faculty are looking for because we have pretty close relationships. But supplementing it with the STAR system that gets diffused across SUNY, much like um, Ask us 24/7 does with the library system is a nice um, is a nice relationship. Do you do any um, your orientation for your online programs? Is that done online or face to face? You know that is whenever someone says that's a great question it means that they haven't solved it yet. <laughs> so I will tell you we have been um, struggling with that because we're not comfortable with the current way we work with students to get them oriented to the campus. It's more that link based, blah, blah. And so we're looking to, because our own IDs are pretty um, tied up with current projects, we're actually looking to um, contract with an ID to create an online orientation the way we really want it to be. Um, a really engaged orientation, not just an orientation of Blackboard because they already have that, not just go to the web page, but a different, very targeted, engaged um, online. So any IDs that people um, know, we had one and then they, they ran out of time. They're in hot demand now. So we're looking to do that contractually. 
which actually, you know, I've always kind of been um, discouraged we haven't done that earlier. However, actually, I think it's better now because we have a better sense of what that orientation really should yeah, be. So I, I think if we had created it earlier, it would have been um, ho-hum. Yeah. Yep. And now it could really be engaging. It could really speak to these students that aren't on campus. It'll be filled with giveaways. <laughs> You really know the way to their hearts, right? Yeah, I know, they love it. Well, you know how we got this survey? We gave away a gas card, and we went from 30 responses to 300 plus because, you know, especially the students that, um, you know, non-trads working, they need that gas card. Well, on top of that, to get students engaged in through like the online platform, we put out a contest, and the top prize was $500 worth of textbooks. Um, that was done in a drawing and so that's how we got a lot of our students signing up for real life and, and creating a profile was this hope of maybe winning the yeah. the, uh, the textbook prize which was a big deal um, so yeah I giveaways mean, are good yeah food doesn't really work the food works with the young campus students but gas cards and giveaways work with the uh, off campus the orientation that you mentioned as it exists is that required no, um, the Blackboard orientation that they, um, that we have to, you know, the orientation to learning management system, we encourage the faculty to have all of their students take it. Um, we, mandatory is always the word that people don't seem to like, but really encourage the faculty to have the students go through it. But once again, that's one dimension. That is not getting them um, connected to the campus. So the orientation that we're looking to develop yeah, it'll have a tiny piece where they need to do the learning management system, but it's more going to be about your SUNY Cant student. Now, um, what are the things that you should know about? Um, that's really where we should put our education push on what we're already doing. Get them in the beginning instead when they're here and say, oh, I just want to remind you of online tutoring. I mean, we have all this information everywhere on Blackboard, et cetera, but I think we got to grab them right when they're oriented make them excited about being a fully online student and make them feel a part of us from the beginning. You know, the Blackboard orientation, like, you know, that's just click, you know, this is how you do an assignment. You have to know all that, but that's not going to bond them to the campus. <laughs> Other questions for Molly or Courtney? Some great discussion in the chat. I appreciate all of your um, sharing what you do on your campuses. It's really great to capture in this recording. Yeah, I just want to really encourage people to reach out to us. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear what your campus is doing. I'd love to hear your questions. Um, I just think this is a really um, new time for everybody and it's only going to increase. It's not it's not going to um, go away, especially with you know financial concerns. And there, there was the request for your contact information. I'm going to switch screens and or switch sharing in a moment. If you could type that in the chat, that would be terrific. All right, chat, chat. Yeah. Yes. It's just Motma at Canton.edu, M-O-T-T-M-A at Canton.edu, and you know, um, and I'll just forward it to Courtney. With the dynamic duo, <laughs> sure, <aren't we? laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. That's great. I'll go ahead um, and do some of our wrap-up slides now. And you're always welcome to call. I mean, I think um, I get so excited about talking about it. I know I tried to talk about it a year ago and everybody nodded their head at me. And <laughs> um, so I'm really thrilled when people like ask questions instead of rolling their eyes. <laughs> you know you make progress when people don't roll their eyes at you anymore. They're like, oh. You're absolutely right. Well, I want to I wanna thank you both uh, for sharing with us today. We always appreciate your leadership and willingness to represent the Open SUNY community.
Um, we do recognize that there may be others in the community that have an interest and expertise who want to share on a topic. So if you're interested in doing that, um, I will put that link in the chat. Um, there's a really quick and easy way for you to submit a proposal. Today's session was recorded and that will be made available shortly. Give me a day or so to get that up on the website. It will be on the site where you registered. So I'll put that link in the chat as well. And if you want to view any of our past fellow chats from our Open SUNY speaker series, we have a website where you can check those out as well. Okay. This week is actually open access week, if you weren't aware of that. And SUNY OER Services is hosting a one hour showcase webinar tomorrow um, at 1 p.m. This webinar features the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources. The guest speakers will be sharing the history of the organization and how it supports community colleges in leading OER initiatives, and also talk about how you can get involved and connect with others in the community. It is open to everyone. It, it doesn't, um, it's not just going to focus on community colleges, uh, but there is a cap on registration. So if you're interested, I would visit the SOS OER webinar page there and get signed up. So I thank you to all of you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you at another virtual event soon. Yes, we really appreciate being able to talk, and we'll come back and do the results if anybody wants us to. <laughs> Actually, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Love to share um, how it really panned out. So we're all set, Erin. We're going to sign off. You can do that. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, thank you so much.